Here's the thing. When I used to go to the gardening store and try and buy like a pre-blended organic, you know, there's a lot of companies that have individuals like you could go buy alfalfa or you could go buy fish bone meal. But when it got to the blends, I didn't like it. And here's why. If you go to the local gardening store or the hardware store and you grab an organic blended fertilizer, all purpose or tomato fertilizer or rose fertilizer, they'll even put pictures of roses on there as if the rose has a particular diet that it prefers. That's not the case. And so I don't want people to be misled that a tomato needs a specific fertilizer. Medicinal plants, annual flowering plants, tomatoes, they require the same thing. So there's nothing special about them. Obviously, we all feel our chosen plant that we prefer to grow is going to be special to us. Some people love tomatoes and it's the only plant that matters. But just because of that doesn't mean we need a special fertilizer for it. And so then you'd flip the box over and you'd start reading it. Well, guess what they did? To get it organic listed, you had to use ingredients that are approved for organic use. They don't have to be organic. And when you read it, it reads like what has the highest profit margin now that I understand it. So you read it and you go, oh, cottonseed meal, soybean meal. Uh, uh, what is the other one that's really popular that's uh, highly contaminated? Uh, cotton and soy are two of the big ones, but then you'll see bone meal and blood meal and all these waste sources. So essentially, if you're a fertilizer manufacturer, you'd be like, hey, you got some waste? Can I have it for free? Perfect. And you'd clean up shop for them, handle the freight. That's how a lot of these fertilizer businesses came to be. And so when I'm reading a box that says cottonseed meal, magnesium sulfate, bone meal, I'm just reading cheapest shit on the market with the widest profit margin. And when you think about cotton, it's not fed to animals. So the it can be literally sprayed at harvest to make clothing out of. And then as soon as you do that and you've taken what's made for cotton, all the waste is now considered approved for organic use. It can be very toxic. And so now people are caring more. And obviously there's been huge instances where some of that waste killed big gardens and they had to do research about how it happened. So we're all learning. But um, when you go to the typical garden store, comparing it to Craftland, night and day difference in the quality of inputs. And that's why we continue to produce it. It's a nightmare to make. I mean, truckloads of materials from all over the country have to land and be here. And all 13 ingredients or something have to be on the ground at one time and multiple thousands of pounds. Then we have to weigh them and mix them. And I kind of wish we hadn't done it, but at the end of the day, eventually it might get big enough where we can have maybe a machine that helps us with all of the blending of it. But um, it, it's really, really good. So... This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.